Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over kind of the fundamentals of what Bravo tags are, why they are important when getting started with Bravo. And I'm going to go over a few of my favorite tags as well. Um, some common ones that you may be using a lot when you're creating an app with Bravo. And we're going to jump into Figma and I'm going to show you how to implement these Bravo tags and how they work. And I'll share a few tips and tricks along the way with how I implement these. So let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's jump into my computer here. We'll go into Figma and I'll show you how to implement these Bravo tags. All right, so we're over here on my computer and what I have open right now to start us off is Bravo's website. On Bravo's website, this is where we can kind of take a look at how to get started with Bravo. And what we're gonna have to really take a look at is again, tags and what are tags and how do tags work when creating a Bravo app. So up here at their menu, if you go under features, you're gonna see Bravo tags. You can go ahead and click on that and it's gonna give a brief description about what Bravo tags are and how we can actually use them to build apps without having to actually code. Now, Bravo tags is just a naming convention that you're gonna use when creating your app design in Figma. With these certain, um, namings of layers, Bravo's software will then recognize and see these different um, naming conventions, which are your Bravo tags. And that is what is going to basically let Bravo know what am I doing with this layer? So there are different types of Bravo tags as we search, um, as we scroll down a little bit here, we can take a look, there are uh, menu tags, which are going to give us different types of menus from modal menus to slide menus from the side, tab menus. Um, you also have things like components, so you can add things like GIFs, you can add Lottie files. We can do actions, so you can add features like search and filter features to your app. You can play audio, you can play video. Uh, you can do forms, so you can take uh, text input, number inputs, um, containers. Now this is going to be an important one that we're going to go over because this are gonna, the container is going to be one of your main Bravo tags that I feel like you're going to use for pretty much every app that you're going to create in Bravo. You also have features that you can do where you can refresh pages. Um, and you're also going to use these tags to create your app store assets as well as set up things um, for your app settings. So you got things like light and dark mode. There's going to be one more thing that we take a look at before we get into Figma. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, there's this help center here. This actually opens up a Notion document that's made by Bravo. And if we scroll down a little bit more, you're going to have something called our Bravo Tags Master List. Now, this is a really useful uh, Notion document. This is going to give you an entire list of all the different Bravo tags that you can implement into your apps. And if we drop down here, like at menus, it shows you what to name your layer with the Bravo tag where to label it, what it is, uh, and some of them even have tutorials or samples in case you're not 100% sure how to implement them into your application. So we're gonna keep this open because we're gonna reference back to this uh, as we go through our Figma file and how to add Bravo tags to our app design. All right, so we're in my Figma file right now. I have a iPhone 11 frame open. This is kind of where we're going to make our app design. Now, what we can do is we can add a top bar over here. Basically a top bar is a section of your app that is gonna remain at the top. So when we scroll and everything, uh, we can make it so that bar stays sticky onto the top of our application. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll draw a rectangle here. We'll make it about 150 in height and we'll have it span all the way across. And we're just gonna give it a color really quick. 
we'll give it a nice light blue color. Oh, we can now make a nice solid blue. There we go. And we're gonna add it some text, and we're gonna say my app. Make that text a little bigger. Make it bold, and we'll center it and shift it up 10 pixels. So we have this section that we want to um, basically, again, remain at the top of our application. Now, if we were to submit this into Bravo and try and view it, um, we wouldn't really see anything on our app because none of these layers have Bravo tags in the name of the layer itself. So we're going to go back to that Bravo tags master list here. And we're going to come to the second, uh, second section here, containers, top bar and slider. And there's this section here that is uh, basically a Bravo tag and the element is a top bar. This is how we're going to name our layer here. We're going to add it to a second level container. And basically what it is, is the top bar is a container that fixes its position to the top of the screen and does not scroll with the rest of the screen. So again, in our application here, if I have a list of items down here at the bottom, I can scroll through those items, but this top bar will remain sticky at the top of our application. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take this Bravo tag here. So I can actually copy that right there. You have to make sure that you have the brackets on both ends. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that there. So a second level container. So your first level is going to be your main frame of your application. And your second layer is gonna be within that. Now we have two different elements here that we want inside of our top bar. So what we will have to do first is wrap everything here that we want to be in our top bar inside of a frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, click on F. We're gonna drag a frame across. I'm gonna stretch that to the top and I'm gonna stretch the bottom right to the bottom of where our top bar is gonna end. And we look at our layers on the left here. I have my frame and I have my title and I have my background of my top bar. So what I can do is select the two and drag them into the frame I collect um, just made and that is going to be our second layer frame. So if I take this here, I can name it um, app top bar. And I'm going to go ahead and paste our Bravo tag right there. So the Bravo tag is in between two brackets and it's going to say container and then top dash bar. And that is going to tell Bravo when we submit our application um, that this is going to um, this section here is going to utilize the top bar feature and it will stay sticky to the top of our application. So that was a really quick way of how to implement a Bravo tag into your application. Now I'm going to go over a few commonly used Bravo tags that I feel I use the most when creating apps with Bravo. Uh, the first one is going to be your regular container. So if I have let's say some elements on my application here and let's see I want to I'm gonna create a few different elements just like that you know this is gonna be my app now what I can do say this is gonna be um, like a dashboard of some sort and I'm gonna have different elements and stats here a lot of times what um, some people may do is wrap each of these elements uh, in containers itself but you don't have to wrap them individually you can actually go ahead and wrap everything that's going to be part of one section into one container so what I mean by that is sometimes people will you know go here and then they'll make another one here or spanning all the way across like two different sections um, if this is if these two um, rows of elements are 
going to be used in the same way. You don't have to create two separate frames and containers for them. You just need to create one. Create a frame, wrap everything that's going to be in that section. Make sure you have the height and everything of your container set. You can see all three elements right here on the left are within that. So we're going to name this, we're going to name it stats. It's going to be where our stats are held and I'm going to wrap this in a container. All that is, is a Bravo tag named container, just like that. And what this does is it tells Bravo. So when Bravo goes through the naming layers of your application here in Figma, it's going to run through and see a frame and it's going to have, see this first one here that says container top bar. So it knows that this is going to stay sticky at the top of our application. Next, it's going to go down and it's going to see another frame called stats and that's going to be a regular container. And what this tells Bravo is, okay, now everything in this frame, I have to go ahead and create in our application. Now, when creating um, different sections of your application, you're gonna be wrapping your sections in containers. Now, some rules that you have to follow when creating containers is they have to span all the way from the left to the right, and they have to stack one on top of each other. And what I mean by that is if I take this container here and say I wanted, you know, I wanted some space between my top bar and the stats, I have this space right in between my two containers. Now in my Figma design, I'm going to see that space. But when I bring it into Bravo and if I were to view my app in Bravo Vision, Bravo is going to stack these two containers together. So it's going to end up looking like this. So they're going to stack one on top of one on top of another. You can think of them as like building blocks. They have to touch each other. Now, if you do want space, say you wanted that space, all you need to do is make sure that you drag one of your containers up and touching and you can go ahead and move the elements inside however low you want. But the two containers must be touching each other and stacked on top of one another. So that's one tip there when using your container tags. Now another common Bravo tag that you may be using in your application are the menus. And Bravo has a bunch of different menus you can use. We did come out with some videos that go over how to implement these Bravo tags to create menus. So if you want to go ahead and watch those, you can check those out. But what I wanted to show you here is how you can actually use tutorials and samples to kind of help guide you through um, how to implement Bravo tags when you're not completely sure how to do it. So if we come to menus here, let's just take the first one up here at the top, the tab menus. Now it says right here, the name of the Bravo tag. Now this one's a little bit different. It says top level app page is where we have to implement this tag. But we have our description here. It says the menu that stays fixed on every screen as a bottom navigation bar. But say we looked at this and we're not entirely sure how to get started by add, um, to add this tab menu. If you come to the right here, you do have tutorials and we can hit see tutorial. And in here, this is a little tutorial that you can follow on how to go ahead and implement this tab menu. So it'll take you step by step. It'll show you how to wrap your tab menu and in what containers should you uh, be wrapping your elements in. It'll tell you which layers to name with the right Bravo tags. And it'll even show you how to go ahead and link those menu items to the proper pages of your application. And if you still don't completely understand through the tutorial, they even provide samples so you can download the Figma file, you can take a look at it and you can kind of copy it for yourself um, just to kind of get used to how to implement certain Bravo tags. So I wanted to share that with you just in case, you know, we don't go over certain Bravo tags in videos. Um, you can still see how you can learn and find your resources to go ahead and implement the tags yourself. Now, another type of Bravo tag I wanna go over, which you may find yourself using 
is the forms. The reason I want to bring up form Bravo tags is you can look at where to label the tag and it, a lot of it is text layer, uh, rectangles. This can be a bit confusing at first when you're used to adding containers and everything to your application. How forms work, so if we create, we'll just create a quick looking form here in our Figma file. So let's say this is our form that we want to go ahead and create. We want them to enter their first name, last name, and email address in these three input sections. Now when creating um, and naming your layers with the proper Bravo tags, if we look again at the forms, if we wanted a single line text input, we have to add it to the text layer itself. So a lot of times what will happen is, let's just copy this real quick. Um, I've helped people before create apps and what they'll do is say they group this first section here together. They'll come up here to this group, we'll name it first name, and they add the Bravo tag to this group, which makes sense. You know, you want this to be the section that you add your input into. But you also have to take a look at the Bravo documentations and we're supposed to be adding it to a text layer. So what that means is, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. We can leave it grouped here, but we have to open up the group and we have to make sure that we add that Bravo tag to the text layer. So the layer that we have the text for first name that is where we have to implement and put the Bravo tag for Bravo to um, use the correct um, section of our app design when doing the text input. So what you see is that we have our layer here with our first name, but it only spans 65 pixels in width. And what this means is if I were to say this, if someone were to have a really long name that is longer, and the width of your text layer here, it's gonna cut off. So you have to make sure that you span this text layer however long or wide you want to give your user the ability to enter text inside of. So with that, you know, spanning it across however wide you want, your user can then type in anything that fills in that section. But if you do keep it to the default set size, you may notice that some things start to get cut off uh, in your application when you view it. So that kind of does it for Bravo tags. I really wanted to go over the basics of how to implement them into your Figma designs and kind of go over, again, some commonly used Bravo tags that you may find yourself using in a lot of applications that you start to build, as well as some common tips and tricks to help you avoid mistakes um, that you may run into when adding those Bravo tags. Just to recap, always check out Bravo's website, check out their Notion document. You're gonna have a bunch of information there that you can always refer to. Um, again, you can always check and see how to implement Bravo tags, where to add them in. Um, and you can also view tutorials and samples for yourself. All right, and there you have it. That is a rundown of how to use Bravo tags. I hope you folks learned the basics of how you can start using these tags to create your very own apps in Figma and bring them into Bravo and bring them to life. If you folks want to learn more about Bravo, we do have a library of videos that you can watch on Bravo's site. So you can head on out over there, check them out, and you can start building your dream app today. So I hope you folks enjoyed it. Have a good one. See you later.